Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about what the total time derivative is. In the previous video, we talked about the partial time derivative. Now let's go a step further and add a bit of a complication. Let's say that we are trying to examine the amount of blue spheres through this cube in space, and in particular we are trying to determine the concentration of blue spheres within this cube at any time. And for added fun, let's assume that our cube is strapped to our chest as we are walking around. So. Just to recap, we are now walking our box around a room and trying to determine the concentration change of blue spheres within our box over time. This is going to be a total time derivative, which we can represent mathematically as a summation of partial derivatives of all of the variables inside our multivariable function. So firstly, what variables are affecting our multivariable function? Well, obviously, time is going to affect our number of spheres within our cube at any given time, as they are just floating out in the room in every which direction. What else do you think is going to affect our concentration? Well, if we're moving around the room with our control volume, our cube of interest, then our position will also affect the concentration, right? Therefore, we have four variables that constitute our multivariable function. That is, the time and the three spatial variables, x, y, and z. Therefore, mathematically, we can break down each of these four variables into a summation of partial derivatives, which is basically saying the sum of what concentration changes happen because of t plus whatever concentration changes happen because of x and so forth. Just note that these three spatial terms here represent the velocity at which we are transporting our cube, our control volume, in the three spatial directions. As a summary, in the previous video, we talked about what the partial time derivative is, which allows us to understand how one variable in our multivariable function fluctuates the output that we are interested in. The total time derivative in this video simply builds on this concept and takes all those partial time derivatives, sums them to give us the total time derivative, which should make sense, right? In the next video, our substantial time derivative, we will add yet another complexity and add some constant velocity to our problem that we have been developing. Thank you for checking out this video, and I hope it helped your understanding about what the total time derivative is in transport phenomena, and why it can be useful to your study of transport phenomena. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe to support the channel. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to address your concerns.